Hello and welcome to another episode of our special series, Beating All Odds. We are all in the middle of a major crisis, every day looking for solutions, ways to sustain ourselves. In these times of crisis, there are leaders who are showing us the way forward. Despite all odds, problems, challenges that COVID-19 has thrown at us, they are ensuring that the work and the economy stays moving on. With me today is one such leader, Mr. Shamsuddin Jasani, Group MD, Isobar, South Asia. Welcome to the show, Shams. It's a pleasure being on the show. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Shams, I always start with the first question. How are you coping with the situation? How is it working from home? How are you managing your team? So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very unique experience. Uh, and uh, both, I think working from home is... Uh, is is, is a challenge, honestly. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I've never done this ever before. Uh, in my 20 years of uh, my, you know, working career, I've hardly ever taken a sick day. I just enjoy going to office. I mean, it's a, it's a very big part of me, you know, going to office, working with the team. But it's a complete new revelation of uh, working from home, uh, enjoying the time that you're spending with the family. Uh, you know, I have a five-year-old son, uh, and spending a lot of time with him, uh, it does become a challenge because both me and my wife work. So working from home is not exactly that easy, but we're handling it. We're, we're enjoying the time. Uh, it's actually brought the teams a lot more together. I believe, uh, you know, one of the things that even I used to believe, a lot of these people believed that in India, work from home wouldn't work. People wouldn't be able to do work from home. It's not in the culture. You know, people will take advantage of the system. Uh, so we actually in Isobar started work from home about a year back where everyone had two days work from home every month, uh, which was working okay, but this is a, on a very different scale. Uh, so I think uh, people have started taking responsibility a lot more. Uh, I don't know if this will continue in regular process, but I do believe that uh, the productivity has actually gone through the roof. I do six to seven hours of calls every day, which while in office, I never used to do that. So yeah, it's a unique experience. It's, it's a, uh, a new experience. Uh, hopefully, the lockdown should end on the 14th. Uh, but let's let's keep our fingers crossed and let's see where we're going from there. You just said that productivity has gone over the roof. So, but yes. but most of the offices are not working right now. Yes. What kind of work are you uh, currently engaging in, like with with your brands, with your clients? What exactly are you doing these days? So, uh, so it's very important to, for us. What we did was we started uh, working from home about a week before the lockdown. And this was all across all the cities. So not just Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, the three major cities that are there. We started work from home about a week before that. I think everyone did. Uh, what we did was we sent all our creative machines also to everyone's homes. Uh, because there are some very large creative machines which people can't, you know, it's not like a laptop which people can uh, take with them. Uh, so the work is already happening. A lot of... Uh, uh, you know, thinking work, a lot of ideation, a lot of conceptualization. So we're taking this time uh, to speak to a lot of our clients to really kind of uh, take a breather and work on strategizing for clients. So it's extremely essential to utilize this, this time to be able to take a step back. And we've spoken to a lot of clients. We've told them that we're there for them. Whatever they need, they should utilize this time to uh, what I call it is to make their assets better and prepared for tomorrow, not for today. So a lot so of like clients... a recovery plan that you're working on? No, no. I'm not looking at a recovery plan. I'm actually looking at this as a planning for tomorrow rather than planning for today. So it's not a recovery plan. What I'm going... What I'm talking to... What we are talking to our clients is that, yes, you have your... All your earned and owned assets. By earned and owned, I mean your websites, your... Uh, you know, even if your TVCs, your videos, you have your earned assets like your Facebook pages, your Twitter pages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, your e-commerce site. What are you going with digital? Uh, those are all prepared for today. But are they prepared for tomorrow? Are they prepared for being you know relevant three years down the line? So it's not about uh, you know taking stock and saying that okay, you know let's let's try to make sure that we are relevant for today. What we are working on strategy is how to be relevant for three years down the line uh, and take a breather to clients because this is a time when there isn't much work happening at the client's end, a lot of them because, you know, production stopped. They're also working a lot. In fact, I have client calls every single day, which I didn't used to have 
earlier because now it's not about operations it's about strategizing it's about the you know the big ideas the big thoughts that are there so i think what's happened is that the last two weeks have been spent in yes understanding what we have been doing uh, trying to get the operations out of the way trying to make sure that when we are back on track you know we are ready to move and ready to go on day one uh, but it helps that we are a digital agency because it it means that we are we are never shut down we are always working and we are, we are thinking of tomorrow so we are working with a lot of clients to make sure that they are ready for three years down the line and strategizing for them so that's where i think uh, these past uh, two weeks we've been really working hard the work has gone through the roof as i said uh, in, in more in strategic terms and less in operational terms and such so coming back to the you are a digital agency consumption on digital has increased drastically in last few weeks because everyone is confined to their home they are all spending extra time on digital and television now so are, do you have brands or do you have clients uh, who you would advise now to spend money on digital or uh, be seen more because there is no more people yeah i i and then that's 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 where we are looking at a more strategic uh, you know direction with the client uh, is it really relevant for them to spend right now uh, and to spend on uh, yes there are some clients where it might be relevant still to be there but majority of the clients we are not looking at them spending money right now uh, it could be counterintuitive as an agency but as i said the objective is more to look at okay you know let's take a breather now to look at the future and how can we make sure that your future is intact as uh, both as isobar and working for you as a partner uh, to a client we're not advising on a lot of clients to spend and especially clients because a lot of our clients have physical products uh, whether you call it apple oppo whether you call it uh, you know kia motors or uh, you know so a lot of large clients today they're not selling anything they're not moving up it doesn't make sense for them to advertise right now and it's and it's uh, we are always thinking what is best for the clients i do I, i don't want them to do covid 19 related messages which are not relevant to them yes if i was working for a detol or if i was working for a savlon or if i was working for those kind of industry it's a very different kind of a thing but there are challenges so so the objective right now is to mitigate those challenges work with clients to be able to deliver uh you know relevant messaging so if they have relevant messaging for where we are today then yes but don't force fit it don't force fit it to client saying that okay you know uh, there is uh, i i am just going to do this because for the sake of advertising no we are not doing that so that's that's a clear message that we are working with clients that we are partnering with you we understand where you are uh, there is a lot of uh, pain that everyone is going through uh but we 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 kind of looking at a longer term strategy and not uh, be there for them see this this will go uh and what this the, will what is go. the kind of response you are getting from clients so they they very happy with the response that we they are getting because as i said uh, for us it's important that we are partnering them on this journey uh this will end covid 19 will end at some point in time this year it will end uh, we will get back to working and what is very important is that uh, the clients will see the efforts that we are putting uh, with them to be able to help them overcome this crisis uh, rather than you know saying that you know uh, let's let's advertise that's that's short term I'm not looking at short term the whole idea of taking the long term view is to make sure that they come out of this uh, you know relatively unscathed no one is going to come out unscathed people are going to face challenges but we want to help clients come out and come out come out healthy and be able to take the challenges for tomorrow so i think that's and 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 i do see clients respecting that a lot we are having a lot of conversations across the levels with clients in terms of how we, how we can work is continuously there clients are 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 really working with us to say okay what can we do what can we do what is it that you know once this ends how do we take things forward everyone is very optimistic there's one thing which is very clear be it the clients be it uh, our agencies be it our people everyone is very optimistic that you know uh, things will start and you know there are there are already in the end of april there are already launches uh, you know aligned we are ready with the plans uh, and we'll move very quickly on that whatever happens so yes yeah, so i think it's you're ready it's, with launches we're ready with launches uh, as soon as the uh, uh, this this finishes 
crisis if it gets or the lockdown? We still, we still, we still ready for it. I mean, if the lockdown uh, extends, then of course the launch changes. But we are ready. We are ready with them. So what I'm trying to say is that people are optimistic. People haven't given up hope in terms of saying you know things. It's just one two months. We'll be back in action. So I think uh, I think that's that's the idea. Uh, clients are taking this quite well, and the teams are taking it quite well. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's our teams as uh, us as leaders. We need to be able to. guide them in the right direction uh, and not lose hope i think everyone is everyone is really uh, focused and everyone is delivering at their 100% so it's it's, it's a good time shams you also uh, manage other markets right beyond yes. india so what is the kind of response you have from there and what is the level of crisis that you are facing in those regions not much i mean it's just just two other markets uh, sri lanka and bangladesh uh, they everywhere is it, it is like the situation that is there in india everyone is working from home but ev- what's important is that we have the right leaders everywhere uh, they are inspiring their teams to be able to uh, keep on doing better work and better work uh, they are finding ways there are new innovations that are coming in this is the time to again as i said step back and innovate uh, so i'm i'm not finding it difficult at all uh, to inspire people because we have amazing leaders uh what is going to help us really tide this is great people who are showing the way and i think that's that's uh, really helping us so i don't see this all 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 countries are, are just raring to go i mean they are just looking at this as a uh, uh, an opportunity as a as a not a full stop but as a comma i would say uh, to really say okay this is this is this is something which is you know a breather everyone is taking a breather and now they'll come back fully charged that's how i look at it although it's not a full stop it's just a comma as you said but still it will have some impact on your business and on the economy it will, uh, uh, yeah. so i was, I, i wanted to i mean i don't want exact numbers but what is the kind of estimate that you have in your head that how much it will hamper the growth this year so uh, so it is going to hamper let's not make it um, let's not beat around the bush and uh, try to uh you know be overtly optimistic uh yes i am a very very optimistic person but also as a realist we need to understand that this is going to have a deep impact on both the economies across the world in india no no one is going to uh, no country is going to be um you know safe from this it's it's going to be a, a problem it's going to take us 6 months i believe before uh, things come back to some sort of uh, normalcy i see i see about a 15 to 20% uh, at least a reduction uh, in terms of spends uh, across the board uh, i have actually given interviews in terms of saying that you, you know during when, the crisis or even post crisis oh, i'm i'm talking about in the year when the uh, when in 2020 when uh, digital was supposed to grow 30% 28% was what as the dan digital report we uh, we published i think is going to be closer to about 15 to 17% growth uh, so which means that the next couple of months are going to be uh, slower of course than that and then it'll pick up uh, you know during diwali time and of course uh, hopefully uh, you know uh, hopefully ipl happens uh, maybe if not in this country somewhere outside the country i don't know what it is but uh, a, a lot of that will help so i think once this settles i think it will be close to about september october uh, is when we will see it maybe be coming back to a little bit normal but i think at an average we're looking at a 15% drop uh, in terms of uh, the spends and 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 this is across the board so i think that's 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 where i see uh, the industry going the percent drop in the overall business or only in spends or it's the same yeah it's the same i mean that's so it's a 50% drop technically 50 you said 50 yeah, because so i'm saying from 30 it's going to drop to 15% so that's a 50% drop so 15% uh means that that's that's the growth that's going to happen so i see that as a challenge i see that as so i think the overall growth of digital is going to be about 15 to 18% uh it was supposed to be 28 to 30% i think it's going to be close to about 15 to 18% is what the uh, growth is is going to be so yes it's going to be a challenge uh but i i do believe that we and then what i've spoken to a lot of uh, the team members is that uh, uh, we need to be Uh, working together we need to be compassionate we need to really band together uh, it is going to be a challenging time but uh, i honestly feel and then I, i always say this that uh, 
we are privileged in terms of the industry that we are working in. Uh, it's not surgery. Uh, it's not something that you should really lose sleep over. We will recover. We will we will get there. Uh, there are other industries which are suffering much more. I don't think as an advertising industry we will be uh, suffering that much. Eventually, yes, it will be. But I think we will bounce back both as an industry and as well as the economy uh, towards the end of the year. What are some of the lessons this crisis has taught you? Professionally? Oh, as I, yeah, as I said, uh, the one most important thing was uh, the, you know, so one of the questions that used to come to me as a leader was that, you know, I don't, I want people sitting right next to me for the job to get done. Uh, this is both the internal, external clients want that even internal teams, they're saying, no, I need my creative person or my social media person or my community manager, my art director, or my copywriter. I need to be in a room with them to you know, do everything together. Yes, you know, that is one way of doing it. Uh, or if there is one person in Delhi, you know, I, I need a person in Bombay to work in Delhi. You know, people who are in Delhi, they will make sure the work, work is get done. I am remote, so I can't get work done from them. I think a lot of myths have broken because if 200 and more than 250 people can work uh, digitally and work together to deliver solutions to a client, each in separate locations, I think that's a big myth that is broken to saying that I need someone right here to deliver something to me. So I think that that one big myth uh, is is broken now. Yes, we still need we still need to bounce ideas. We still need to meet. Uh, but a lot of what we say, uh, this meeting could have been an email. You know, that's a that's an old joke that happens. It really can. And now we've realized that that you know what is important, what is not. Now prioritization of saying you know. Is it really needed to travel? Is it really needed to uh, go and do these meetings? So I think that from a professional perspective, uh, that whole idea is changing. And I think that will change for the better. And I think that's, that's going to remain even after all these changes. Uh, I think the second thing is, I said, uh, the whole idea of work from home uh, is going to take a larger kind of a role. Uh, people used to be afraid of it. Uh, we lose in any city, in any given city, we lose between two to three hours traveling. Uh, yeah. 60 to 70 percent of the workforce they lose a lot of time traveling, uh, I, and I think this will also make sure that we we have the right mix of people who are working from office as well as working from home to make sure that we are delivering uh, you know great products and 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 the um, you know the the ROI is much better. So I think I think those are the two big things that uh, this has changed uh, quite a bit. How are you managing your teams? I mean, how are you boosting their morale? I mean, so, so as a leader, uh, and as and then this is something that I we have calls almost every day. As I said, uh, I'm having a town hall in two days' uh, time with the entire uh, team. A, you need to be upfront and honest uh, about what is happening. Uh, you don't sugarcoat it uh, because yes, there will be challenging times. But as a leader, you need to make sure to teach, so uh, tell each and every individual that you matter, uh, and you, we are responsible for where you are today, and what you are doing today. So, so one thing is very clear that uh, you know we are going to face these challenges, but these challenges we're going to face together. It's not that you are alone in this. We're all in this together. We're all a close community. I think this has just brought us closer. And that's one point that I keep on reiterating is that we're all together on this, together on this journey. Uh, whenever this ends, we are going to end together. We are going to celebrate the, you know, coming out of this, uh, of course, in a phased manner. <laughs> Please don't get out and start celebrating. But uh, we're all in this together. And so that's number one. Number two is you need to be compassionate. Uh, there, are, there are certain people who will have certain challenges that are there. Uh, this could be monetary, this could be um, challenges which are, um, you know, physical in nature, any kind of challenges that are there. Uh, as a leader, you need to understand and be compassionate and have, have enough speed to be able to answer to these because a lot of people come, uh, you know, you go around saying, Achha, policy kya hai, and then trying to, but as a leader, I need to take decisions at a much quicker pace in this kind of a scenario. Uh, keeping in mind the overall objective, we it's about being compassionate with the team. And of course, at the end, we're all working towards a goal. 
make sure that they know what the objective is, break down those objectives into shorter term, long term and longer term objectives and give them a reason to believe in what they're doing. Uh, a lot of people are sitting at home and, um, you know, kind of losing uh, the focus, uh, losing a little bit of hope. Uh, but if you give them a goal, if you give them an objective, if you give them a direction and clearly have these three laid out, uh, which is the short term, uh, mid term and long term, uh, they will have some something to work towards and a regular sort of a check in saying, okay, how are you doing? What is it that you're doing? Uh, let's, you know, kind of, are we moving in the right direction? Do you feel that you're moving in the right direction? Involve them in the direction that we've always been uh, structured as ISOBA. Uh, even though we are part of a very large group, we work as entrepreneurs. So the entire organization works together towards a common goal and they are responsible as much as I am in terms of the doing. So I think that it's a long answer, but that's the answer to how we try to inspire the team. I, if you had to give similar advice to those who do not work with you, but are young people who have, maybe they've just started their own agency recently and the lockdown has come in. They are sitting directionless. They don't have shams to, you know, give them targets or to check. What should they do in a situation like this? Okay, this might seem like uh, blowing my own trumpet, but uh, I always say that your biggest supporter is you. Uh, always... I look for inspiration within uh, and then that's as a person. So I'm, I'm going to say as a person, there will be, there will be difficult times. Uh, and, and at the same time, you need to make clear um, choices. It's, it's your choices which will define where you go towards. I'm not that big a believer in luck. I'm a big believer in the choices that you made. It is going to be difficult. The situation is going to be difficult. So as a person who is on their own, starting up on their own, Clearly make an informed choice as to what you're going to do. Uh, do you have the finances to ride out the six months and you know get there? It is going to be difficult. The clients are not going to spend. Uh, so I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to be very honest to yourself as to what you're going to do. Uh, as that's an objective that you need to live. If not, just go out and see what is the best, uh, you know, best way forward. Do you want to go back? into working or not. It is going to be difficult. Again, you know, everyone is uh, slowed down, but that doesn't mean that good people are not wanted. Uh, good people are wanted everywhere. Uh, so I don't think that's a, that's a challenge. Uh, make a choice, stick to that choice. But yes, uh, you have responsibilities, you have uh, decisions to make. Make those decisions with a clear focus in mind, saying that this is going to be slightly difficult. It's not business as usual. Uh, it is slightly difficult. So, so just take care of what decisions you make. Uh, financial is going to be very important for everyone. Uh, make the right kind of choices that are going to govern. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs are, um, as I would say, kamikazes. You cannot, you cannot be an entrepreneur if you're not risk taking. But in this kind of scenario, just weigh the risks because it's the risks are slightly higher than in a normal year. So I think that's that's really the objective. That's what I would say. Thank you so much for talking to us, Shams. There's anything that you would like to add? Uh, the only thing, couple of things that I'd like to add is that we will get out of this. Uh, this will come to an end. 100% it will come to an end. Uh, it is difficult times, but understand, and I keep on saying this, is that if we band together, we will come out of it, uh, and we will come out of it uh, in a shining brighter than ever. Uh, we are going to change as a economy as a country, uh, I do believe that we are going to change. Uh, this is going to bring a, a good change uh, for going forward. And uh, if you, I, I seriously believe that we are going to come out on the other end better than what we were. Uh, as a country and as people, we are banding together. Um, I think, I just hope that that continues. So I think uh, that's something that is very important is that, and, and so it's the only thing that I would want to leave people with is that have compassion. Let's move forward together. And I think that's that's really where, whether it's our industry, whether it's our country, that's where we are going to move forward is, is together. So I think that's where I would like to. Thank you. On that optimistic note, we'll uh, conclude this interview. Stay at home and stay safe. Thanks for talking to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.